I'm Nick with Spatial Video Insights. You know, one of the killer features that was promoted for the Apple Vision Pro was the ability to shoot and view 3D spatial video. The Apple Vision has been out for a little over two months, and now I think I'm ready to share some tips to help you shoot the best spatial video you can. And believe it or not, I also have some advice on the best way to view your spatial video. As we go through this, I'll also give my thoughts on this, the KuCam Ego 3D camera. Of course, it's not the only solution, and I'm not saying it's the best solution, but we will talk about what it can offer. Now, we're not talking about VR video in 360 or 180 degrees. Spatial video is Apple's term for 3D video, which plays in a normal frame but has a stereoscopic 3D effect, so you can see depth. If you're familiar with the Apple Vision Pro, then you probably know that you can shoot spatial video using the headset itself. It's pretty easy to shoot these videos, but you have to wear the headset as you're recording, which can be problematic. The other popular option is to shoot spatial video with an iPhone 15 Pro. Of course, this only works with the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, unless something changes with other iPhones in the future. But it's much easier than shooting video with the headset itself. Now, what you may not know is that the videos you shoot on the headset are in a square frame, but spatial videos from the iPhone are widescreen, 16 by 9. The difference is that you get more vertical view from video shot on the headset, more video at the top and bottom of the frame. And I think you'll get best results if you treat these videos differently when you watch them. When you play a spatial video, it starts in a normal window, so you can watch the video in that frame, or you can tap the button to enable the immersive view. That blurs and stretches the edges of the frame to fill your field of view. And when I first saw this, I thought it was terrible. The video feels smaller and the blurred area is just distracting. But here's something that I've come to discover. The immersive view may look terrible on widescreen videos shot on an iPhone, but it actually looks pretty great with those square frame videos shot with the headset itself. The increased framing at the top and bottom does fill your field of view. And also, I think the software enlarges the video a little bit, so it does really feel immersive. Since I've started watching the square framed spatial videos in that immersive mode, I think I see why so many people were blown away by it. So here's my advice. For video shot on the Apple Vision headset itself, try that immersive mode. But for widescreen videos shot on an iPhone, I think it's best if you use one of the Apple Vision's built-in environments to ensure that you have a very dark background. Then just watch those videos in the normal floating window. Now, before you go out into the world to shoot your spatial videos, you should know that there are a few other ways to shoot. One option is to use a third-party camera app on the iPhone. I recommend the app Spatialify. It can do a few different things, but one of them is an option to shoot 3D spatial videos. Now, this still only works on an iPhone 15 Pro, but the iPhone's default app will only shoot spatial videos at 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second. The Spatialify app has options for 4K resolution at 30 frames per second, or 1080p at 60 frames per second. And I found either of these to be better quality than the iPhone's default camera app. Videos shot using the Spatialify app are still saved directly to your photo library and are identified as spatial videos on the Apple Vision headset. But one problem I have with the iPhone, whether you use the default camera app or a third party app, is that the 3D effect is really kind of subtle. It just doesn't jump out the way that I'd hoped. And I think I have a good idea why. To shoot 3D video, you need two cameras side by side, which simulates the separation between your eyes. Now, the iPhone 15 Pro does have two lenses side by side, but these lenses are just too close together. To get a good 3D effect, the two cameras should be about as far apart as your eyes. So that's one reason you might want to consider the KuCam Ego, a compact camera that shoots 3D photos and videos. It sells for around $300 US, and it might be worth considering if you want to easily shoot 3D video without upgrading to an expensive iPhone 15 Pro. The other big benefit is that the Ego camera is designed specifically for 3D. The two cameras are much farther apart, about 65 millimeters apart. This is very similar to the typical distance between human eyes.
So the 3D effect is much more impressive than spatial videos shot on an iPhone. Also, videos from the Ego are 1080p at 60 frames per second, which is much smoother than the iPhone's default 30 frames per second. Videos from this camera look great under the right conditions, but it's far from perfect. It's not designed to work with the Apple Vision directly, so you cannot simply copy your videos directly to your library and expect them to work in the Vision Pro. But they do have a free utility to convert your videos into Apple's spatial format. And there are a few other challenges. If you want to know more, we have a separate video specifically about the Ego 3D camera, which goes through the issues and workarounds you may need to get it working. So now you potentially have four different ways to shoot spatial video. So let's get into my tips for shooting the best videos you can, regardless of which camera you're using. My first tip involves framing. The 3D effect works best when your subject is fairly close to your camera, but not too close. Generally, one to three feet away from the camera gives you the best 3D effect. However, it's important that you keep your subject away from the edges of the frame. Here's a video I shot with the iPhone, and I thought the framing was pretty good, but when I view it in the Apple Vision Pro, there's this blurred effect around the edges of the frame, and now I can see the top of the mermaid's head and the tip of her hand are too close to the frame, and you lose perspective, spoiling the 3D effect. Now this video works much better as a spatial video. The subject is pretty close to the camera, but not too close. There's a nice movement that looks good in 3D, and nothing comes too close to the edges, so nothing breaks the frame, and nothing is blocked by that blurred border. Next, I recommend you shoot longer clips than you think you need. It helps with the immersion to have longer videos. And you should try to have good lighting. Of course, that's pretty standard advice in general, but especially if you use the Ego camera. Videos from the Ego work very well in good light, but are actually pretty bad in darker environments. The iPhone does perform much better in low light, but it's, it's still not ideal. I found that moving shots are not as bad as I feared, but if you do feel the need to move the camera, I recommend slow movements and stay as steady as you can. Shooting with a gimbal is a great way to keep your camera steady, but of course that's another expense. If you keep those tips in mind, I think you'll get much better results. So what about sharing 3D spatial videos? Well, like any other video in your library, you can send spatial videos to your friends through a message, through email, or you can use AirDrop if they're in the same room. But I think the gold standard for sharing videos with the world is YouTube. And there actually is a way to share 3D videos on YouTube and view them on an Apple Vision Pro, but that workflow is so complicated for both the person sharing and the person viewing the content that it's probably not worth it but let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on that anyway. I'm just hoping that YouTube will offer a better solution in the near future. So is there value in shooting and sharing 3D spatial videos? Well, it does seem to be Apple's flagship method for individual content creation for the Apple Vision Pro. And if you have the Vision Pro, you can shoot a few videos with the headset itself to see if you like them. But of course, shooting with the headset itself is kind of limiting. A new iPhone 15 Pro costs over $1,000. The Ego Cam can potentially produce better videos at a lower cost, but with more work. Either way, these involve extra cost, and you'll have to decide if it's worth it. I hope this gives you an idea of your options and the value proposition of shooting and sharing 3D spatial videos for the Apple Vision Pro.